Hi everyone and welcome to the WWE Smackdown vs Raw 2008 Definitive Edition Test Breakdown video. Firstly, to anyone already partaking in the more technical test, thank you so much as your feedback has been completely invaluable. Now we've got a lot to get through today, so let's get started, starting with the roster. One of the biggest complaints of the original game upon its initial release was the game's roster. It featured only 53 playable characters, 46 playable superstars if you take away divas, which meant that multiple prominently featured WWE superstars were missing. Now characters that should have been in are, most notably, the WWE Tag Team Champions Paul London and Brian Kendrick, Shelton Benjamin and Charlie Haas, The Big Show, Rob Van Dam, and even the newly debuted Santino Morella, as well as a returning Chris Jericho and many many more. This test of the Definitive Edition is packed with an additional 21 superstars, creating a much better experience. Honestly, when playing through this game now, the fighting styles and ultimate control moves, the latter which was perfected in this game, now so much more fun when having a roster that they can actually make the most out of them. For example, having Chris Benoit's moveset from the actual prototype makes the submission fighting style so much more fun. You can see what they were going for as he was going to be the poster boy for that style. Until what happened happened. Of course that's no fault of Ukes. But still, you can see how good it would have actually been to play as him here. Likewise, the ultimate control moves that seemed pretty half-baked in 2007 come to fruition in 2008, all made possible by the bigger roster. Take the Big Show for example. I can set a table on fire and then use the ultimate control choke slam to walk up and choke slam them through the table. Likewise, I can toss them over the ropes onto some steel steps or onto another table or whatever I desire. Having the bigger roster actually makes these features worthwhile and breathes a new life into the game as a whole. Alright, let's talk moves. I'll start by saying that both Eddie Guerrero and Chris Benoit use their official movesets from the prototype version in 2008. There are no additional from myself here, as well as all added superstars contain their official stats from previous and future games. I chose to do this so it would give you the most official feel as possible. That aside, not only does the Definitive Edition feature new taunts and new moves such as the Codebreaker, but I've also edited some of the move positioning. You see, in the retail game, due to the fighting styles, it was almost impossible to have some wrestlers such as Triple H or The Undertaker to have accurate movesets, as some moves would be locked behind other fighting styles. In the Definitive Edition, however, dozens of moves have been added to multiple fighting styles. So for example, now Triple H can have his actual neckbreaker, the Undertaker can have his DDT and flying clothesline, and someone like Chris Jericho has a standard ground grapple lion salt and a standing grapple step up in Siguri, and so on and so forth. This was done so you could have the most accurate movesets possible, like in the previous iterations of the SmackDown franchise. As far as taunts go, every new superstar also has their taunts, and as mentioned in the SmackDown Shut Your Mouth video, all new moves and taunts are named correctly in creator movesets. New superstars also feature their correct entrance animations, titantrons, and music. A first for SmackDown vs Raw 2008 on the PlayStation 3. There are even a few extra themes as well. So, if you're a fan of Booker T, and want to switch back and forth between his Booker T and King Booker persona, now you can, as both themes are present in the game. But that's not all, there are also some new extra entrances added for alternate attires, legends, and even championship entrances, for you to have as much fun with over the latter part of the summer as possible. Okay, time to talk about championships. Some of you may be thinking, oh cool, we'll see some info on Creator Belt. Unfortunately, not in this test version. There will be a huge update to Creator Belt for the initial release of the Definitive Edition, but not in the test. Today, instead, we're going to be talking about the in-game championship titles. Starting with SmackDown vs Raw 2008, the series did something I absolutely hated that didn't get rectified till WWE 12. You see, at the start of the new console cycle, Ukes decided to create as realistic a championship belt as possible. The leather strap would actually fold, crease, and compress, depending on the size of the superstar wearing it. Now, this did end up with a few problems, and a bug with the World Tag Team Championship and Cruiserweight Championships being too large, but everything else was correct in SmackDown vs Raw 2007 on the Xbox 360. In SmackDown vs Raw 2008, however, Instead of just correcting the two titles that had the issue by making them smaller, they made every single title belt in the game smaller, resulting in kid-size world and WWE titles. 
and it wasn't fixed till WWE 12. So I'm so happy to report that this has been fixed for the Defensive Edition and Championship titles are now the correct sizes once again. But this is something I personally wish I had when the game was released. Now one message I get a lot which I never anticipated is that whenever a new Defensive Edition is about to come out, I always get asked who the default champions are. I never knew it mattered so much, but for those of you that want to know, here you go. These will be the guys who are holding the straps the first time you boot the game up. John Cena is WWE Champion, Santino Morello is Intercontinental Champion, the Hardy Boys are the World Tag Team Champions, Melina is the Women's Champion, The Undertaker is the World Heavyweight Champion, Chris Benoit is the United States Champion, Paul London and Brian Kendrick are the WWE Tag Team Champions, Chavo Guerrero is the Cruiserweight Champion, and Bobby Lashley is the ECW Champion. And if you're interested in the unlockable title holders, Ric Flair is the WCW Champion, Mick Foley is the Hardcore Champion, Stone Cold Steve Austin is the Million Dollar Champion, and The Rock is the Attitude Era WWF Champion. Okay, it's time to talk about my, and a lot of people's, favourite mode of 2008, GM Mode. In the original, due to the smaller roster size, it was very difficult to manage the game's clean and dirty superstar balance, made even harder when the game locks out JBL and Tommy Dreamer in the mode. So, for starters, everyone on the roster is selectable in GM mode from the get-go. For Legends and the McMahons, go to Edit Available Roster and switch them on, or switch anyone else on or off as you please. But that's not all. Much like I showed in the next update to 2006, 2008's DE comes with a more accurate preset roster. This helps so much as if you don't fancy going through a draft, you can now just pick the preset roster and not be underwhelmed by the size, especially if you're ECW. Now with stars like Kurt Angle, Chris Benoit, Rob Van Dam, all added into the mix. And the larger roster of course greatly helps the tag team scene in GM mode, with the addition of 4 missing tag teams and 5 if you wish to bring back Los Guerreros, I always do. All in all this really makes the mode so much more fun and sustainable. And that concludes today's video breakdown. A full roster list will be up on Patreon shortly, noting every single superstar that is in this test edition. Okay, so a new Q&A video will be up in about a week's time, so if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. There will also be some smaller project updates within the next video as well. So as always, thank you so much. Please like, share, and subscribe, all the good stuff. If you can support me on Patreon, please do at patreon.com forward slash scottjay. Take care, you guys. I'll see you in the next one.